Okay, so as an ISSO, what do you do on a daily basis? Um, a good example of something you will encounter on your job is answering questions, so providing guidance to your client. Um, an example would be, hey, we are trying to encrypt our um, systems. Can you provide guidance on what type of encryption we should use? Or um, are we allowed to encrypt the database or can we go without uh, encrypting the database? Um, how should we encrypt our website? Or how should we encrypt uh, this application? Your answer to them will be found in the company policy. So I tell people all the time, when you get on the job, one of the first things you should do is learn the company's policies. Learn the company's policies and procedures. Um, there you will be able to find the guidance that you'll provide to your client. So if they're asking about um, encryption, all you need to do is look up the policy on encryption for that organization. If the organization does not have a detailed policy on encryption, your next step will be to go to NIST 800-53 and look up any controls to talk about encryption. Um, you can look up the SC controls. That will give you some idea of what type of encryption uh, to be used and the type of feedback or guidance to provide your clients. So this job is easy if you do know what you're doing. So uh, they ask you a question, you have to know where to find the answer. If you can't find the answer with, uh, within your uh, organization's policies or uh, documentation, then uh, use Uncle Google. Look it up, look up best practices for encryption. Nine times out of 10, if you're working in the federal space, NIST is what you're gonna use. As a matter of fact, NIST is what you should use if you're working in the federal space. So here is the document that I talked about, NIST 800-53 Rev 5. And this document will be considered your cybersecurity risk management Bible. This is where you get your answers from. Now, this um, document is about security controls. And security control is something you put in place to minimize risk, all right? Measures you put in place to minimize risk. So this document has different control families, so different scenarios on uh, cybersecurity issues, what could possibly take place, all right? so. Um, when we look at the control families, that will point you in the right direct direction. So if they're asking you about configuration management, uh, then you go to the CM controls. All right, so we could do control F and just type CM and we'll get to the CM controls. All right, so I'm just gonna Scroll down on all the way to the CM control family, configuration management. So if they're asking you a question about configuration management, this is where you pull your answers from. So this particular control family has different sections, different test steps. Okay, so they're asking, hey, how do we uh, put together our configuration management policy or configuration management procedure, you will come to this document, look up configuration management, and let them know, hey, when you develop the document, make sure it has uh, the organization uh, level, the mission, the business process. Make sure it has um, stuff that talks about the laws, and the directives and regulations that they're abiding by. Make sure it has the roles, responsibility, the purpose, the scope. Um, 
then make sure it has baseline configuration. So their policy really should cover all these uh, controls within the CM uh, uh, um, family. And based on the question you're asked, you could pull it up from here. So if they're asking, hey, how do we do um, configuration management? This is where you pull your, your answers from, okay? Um, the other place you get your answers from, again, is the organization's policies. So most organizations will have an intranet. So you've got your internet, that's for um, outside uh, parties, and you've got your intranet for inside, so internal. So every department typically will have their own intranet site where um, people could go and look up information. So for the security department, um, you or they would have uh, an intranet site that has um, their policies um, that other um, members of the organization could go look up. Okay, so here is configuration uh, change control. This is saying, hey, if anyone makes a change to us to the system. Um, it needs to be documented. We need to. It needs to be documented. It needs to be approved. Uh, they need to test that change before it's pushed into production. Uh, so this uh, section within the uh, NIST 800-53 will give you your answer. Now let's say they ask you about multi-factor authentication. Hey, how do we do that? Is that um, what's the guidance for multi-factor authentication? Are we allowed to do it? Can we skip it? So then you would go into this document. You could type, I know it's in the AC controls and IA controls, but you could type multi-factor authentication, uh, just do a control F uh, and then type uh, multi-factor. Uh, it says no results found. We could try something else. So I just typed in factor uh, and I did the search. So control F and uh, I did a, a search. So now I see multi-factor. So you, this is where you could get your information from. Just search within this document and it provides you the information that you're asked. So easy peasy lemon squeezy. If you're interested in training, why don't you sign up for our courses? Go to cyberfirstacademy.com and scroll all the way down. You could select the Information System Security Officer Training. Uh, it's a payment plan of two payments of $199 uh, to get this course. It's a power pack course full of everything you need to know to become a highly paid information system security officer. We also have one coming soon on the security control assessor, uh, so be on the lookout for that one. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We're also on IG at CyberFirst Solutions. Thank you.